Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. Welcome back to another What's for Dinner. I'm gonna share three really easy dinner ideas with you this week, although one of them I'm making for lunch this week, so it could go either way. Before we get into it, I did wanna mention, just in case I get questions about my hair, I did get it trimmed and I got it colored. I don't know if you can tell, but it has my caramel highlights, which I normally have, but it also has some red highlights in there. I thought it would be good for fall. And right after I got it, I showed it to my friends and one of my friends said, your hair looks like pumpkin spice. I'm not mad about it. Okay, let's get to cooking. The first recipe this week is a very simple one and more than likely you already have all the ingredients on hand. That's one of the things I love about it. It's called melt in your mouth chicken. Let's get started. This is everything you need and I feel like if you didn't have a block of Parmesan cheese on hand, you could probably just use this stuff, you know, the Kraft Parmesan cheese, the shaker cheese, grated cheese. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> but you just need some seasoned salt, black pepper, garlic powder, some sour cream, Parmesan cheese, and your chicken. Okay, so I've got my chicken breast in here. I did spray this with Pam first. I had two really large chicken breasts, so I just cut them in half. Um, and I'm going to season them. It does not say that you need to season them, but I feel like you should. I'm just gonna be using this Auntie Nono's seasoning blend. You can use whatever seasoning blend you have on hand. I'm gonna sprinkle that over the chicken and then we will make our mixture. Okay, to go on top of our chicken, I've got one cup of sour cream already in here. I'm gonna add in about a teaspoon of seasoning salt. about a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and two teaspoons of garlic powder. I'm gonna mix all of this together and then I'm gonna add in a cup of our Parmesan cheese. Now I'm just going to spread this mixture evenly across the chicken breast. I'm going to sprinkle on the remaining Parmesan cheese. And now this is going in the oven at 375 for 25 to 30 minutes just until the chicken is done. Okay, if you know why I have bacon going. Let me know in the comments before you see what I'm actually making. I bet you can guess. I had a helper come in here and help me. <laughs> Thank you, baby. You're It's really simple, so I'm really hoping you love it because I'm gonna be making it again, if so. <laughs> mm. Oh man, there's a lot of flavor in that. Yeah? Yeah. Good. That's really good. Yeah, I, did, I wasn't expecting that. Awesome. Yeah, I could see your skepticism in the way you looked at it. I didn't say anything. I just let you think that it wasn't gonna have any flavor. <laughs> yeah, well it doesn't have like the, um, it just looks bland. It does look it bland. It looks bland, there's no coloring on it. Right, right. You're just like, okay, I'm skeptical. Yep, and I don't blame you. 
There's lots of flavor in this. It's got Parmesan cheese in there, sour cream, garlic powder, seasoned salt, mm. black pepper, oh, yeah. and then I seasoned the chicken because, you know, mm -hmm. with Auntie No No's. So. Mm -hmm. Well, Cole nodded his head. He stuck his thumb in there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, this is a winner? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we both know that you're going to love the green beans and the oh, mashed yeah. potatoes. Mm -hmm. Steven has really fallen in love with his favorite green beans or his favorite cut of green beans now is this Italian style. So that's what I've been doing lately. But he's right, it does look bland, but I'm glad to hear that it's not. Several of you have been asking for my opinion on the meals as well, and her opinion. <laughs> but I will tell you, he's right, this is not bland at all. That has a great flavor, it's very smooth. And I will definitely be making that again because it was so simple. The second meal I've got for you this week, I am making for lunch because it is just that easy. And honestly, I normally cook on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday for my Friday videos. Monday this week, I was not feeling well at all. I was starting to get a tension migraine. I was very overwhelmed. It had been a long day, so I didn't cook. We ordered pizza. That was what was for dinner on Monday. <laughs> and then Tuesday was the meal you just saw. And now it's Wednesday and I am going to cook for lunch today, which is a really easy one. And then I'm also going to do subby supper tonight. So today for lunch, I'm making sheet pan shrimp fajitas. It really doesn't get much easier than this. I just need to slice these up. I've got taco seasoning back here. I've got my tortillas and then I've got my shrimp. I need to thaw that shrimp out, but it's all gonna go on one sheet pan in the oven for like 10 minutes total. And then it'll be time to eat lunch. got these shrimp that need to be thawed out. I'm just going to pour them in this colander and run them under some cold water and that will take just a minute or two. I forgot to mention as well that I have my oven preheating to, oh, it's there, 450. Okay, now it's just time to assemble everything in this large bowl. I've got our bell peppers. The recipe called for yellow, orange, and red, but I could not find a pack of those at my grocery store, so I just have two orange and a red. I'm gonna add in my onions that I've thinly sliced, just kind of break them apart. Okay, so I've got all my veggies in there. I'm gonna add my shrimp. And now, I'm gonna add in a couple of tablespoons of olive oil just to coat it really well. And then the recipe called for several different spices and all of those spices are in my homemade taco seasoning. So instead of me measuring out different ones and grabbing them out of the um, cabinet, I just figured it would be a lot easier just to use my taco seasoning. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll leave my taco seasoning recipe below if you haven't seen that before. And I am just eyeballing it. I think I just added about two tablespoons maybe. And if I think that's good, we'll go with it. If not, I'll add just a little bit more. Yep, I'm gonna add just a little more, pretty much the equivalent of a, like a taco seasoning packet that you can get from the grocery store. That's what I'm adding in. Okay, this is ready to go on our sheet pan. So I just lined my pan with some aluminum foil just to make it that much easier to clean up. I did go ahead and spray it with Pam. I know I've got olive oil covering my um, veggies and my shrimp, but just to be on the safe side, I went ahead and sprayed it. While that is heating up in the oven, I am going to heat up these refried beans. I like to add just a little bit of sour cream to them to make them even smoother, more like the restaurant. But y'all, th this is the best kind of refried beans I've found. This is from Aldi. They are the best. They're better than name brand at the regular grocery store. 
They are so creamy already, so you really don't have to add much to them. I'm just gonna add about a tablespoon, maybe a heaping tablespoon of sour cream to them. Kinda hard to do this one-handed, but I'm just gonna combine all of this and let it heat through. So there's only a minute left before I turn it over to broil, so I'm gonna throw these in the microwave. I've covered these tortillas with cling wrap. I'm gonna put them in for like 30 seconds to a minute just so that we'll have warm tortillas to go with our lunch. Okay, it's been eight minutes, so I'm gonna turn this over to broil for about two minutes. The loneliest number. Cole is doing schoolwork and eating. Stephen is working and eating. It's just me. But let's dig in. That's really great. To be a 10 minute meal, that's good. That is a great lunch. It would be a great dinner too. You could add more. Um, obviously you could add like avocado, salsa, all the different things that you like on your fajitas. but. This is so good. I love how simple this was. This would be a great dinner for you if you're busy. Um, you could even chop up the veggies in the morning and then throw it all on the sheet pan when you get home from work and dinner is ready in 10 minutes. So good. Okay, it's a little bit later in the afternoon. It's not quite time to make dinner yet. I am starting to prep dinner though. I've got an appointment that I've got to run to. Um, and when I get home, I'm not gonna have a whole lot of time before Cole needs to leave for church. So, I am trying to prep everything as much as possible so that when I come home from this appointment, I can throw Subby Supper together and it's gonna be delicious and it's gonna be so easy and quick. So part of that is, if you can see that right there, that is bacon cooking on the stove. Um, I'm just going ahead and doing that now and I'll just put it in the fridge until it's time. I'm also going to shred the cheese that I need for this recipe and I'm gonna chop up the onion and I'll tell you in just a second what I'm making. So I just put the lid back on this. I'm just gonna stick this in the fridge as is just until it's time for uh, me to get dinner together but at least my onion is already chopped. The next thing I'm gonna do is shred up this cheese. The recipe called for an American cheese loaf that's been shredded. I could not find that at my store, so I had bought this last week maybe, and I had not used it yet, and I thought, why not? I got this at Lidl, I'm pretty sure, is where I picked this up. But it's just New York sharp cheddar, so we're just gonna try that in the recipe, just to use it, and I'm sure it doesn't really matter which cheese we use. Gracie, does it matter? Y'all, let me show you. Does it matter? It doesn't? Did you get it? Okay, I'm back from my appointment. I'm gonna get started on dinner. But tonight's dinner is a subby supper, so let me introduce you to her. Tonight's subby supper is called bacon cheeseburger tater tot casserole. I love every word in that title. So I have a feeling we're gonna love this one. The recipe comes from Jessica. Jessica lives in Greenville, Ohio, and she and her husband have been married for seven years. They have two precious children. They have Nicholas, who is in first grade this year, and then they have Autumn, who is two years old. She said she really loves trying new recipes, and this is one of their favorites, so we are definitely excited to give it a try. So here's everything we're gonna need, and y'all remember I prepped everything just a little while ago for you. For me, it's been several hours ago. 
We only need a pound and a half of ground beef, so I will just freeze the other half pound of fat. And that's everything else we need. So the first thing we need to do is get this ground beef into a skillet and brown it up. I'm preheating the oven to 400 degrees and I've got this really large skillet. I've got a pound and a half of ground beef in here browning up and I'm also going to go ahead and add in my diced onion. While this continues to cook, I'm gonna add in some seasonings. I've got salt, pepper, and then this Montreal steak seasoning. I'm gonna do like half a teaspoon of each of these. Now that our ground beef is done, I'm gonna start adding in all of our cheeseburger-like stuff. So I've got some dill relish. I'm gonna add in a couple of tablespoons of that. A couple of tablespoons of yellow mustard. And I'm gonna spray it all over the place. That was great. <laughs> what I do? There's one tablespoon. There's a second. A half a cup of ketchup. And lastly, about a half a cup of this cheese. Okay, hey, baby, let's stir all that together. A two quart dish. This is not quite a nine by 13. I'm gonna spray it. And we're just gonna go take this over there and put this in the dish. So the recipe only calls for about a cup of cheese. I had more like two cups of cheese. So if you have extra cheese, you can go ahead and put some on top now before you put on your uh, tater tots, which is what I'm gonna do. I've got a 32 ounce bag of tater tots. I'm just going to pour these or put these on top. So I didn't need quite the whole bag in order to cover mine. So I'm gonna put this in the oven at 400 degrees for 25 minutes, and then we'll top it with some cheese and bacon. It's been 25 minutes. We're going to top it with the remainder of the cheese. Remember that bacon that I cooked up earlier? I'm going to crumble it over top as well. Steaming. This is gonna go back in the oven just to let the cheese melt. Thank you for cooking. You're welcome. Lord bless us for another great meal. Mm -hmm. So what does that taste like? Bacon cheeseburger, tater tot casserole. What does it taste like? I don't, is that what it's called? Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what it tastes like. He really honestly had no idea what it was called. He wasn't here for the majority of the making. So he wasn't here when I recorded the title and all of that. Um, so that's hilarious. 
Mm. It's bacon cheeseburger tater tot casserole, babe. Good job. Throw some mayonnaise on that. <laughs> Maybe even some pickles. There are some pickles in it. There's still relish in it. You like that, baby? Yeah. Gracie Lou, don't act like you haven't already had some cheese. Well, Jessica, I'm gonna tell you right now, I love this. This is definitely one that I'm gonna put in our rotation. It's a really simple one and it's very hearty, very filling. So thank you so much for sending this in. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed another What's For Dinner. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you did. And if you haven't already, I would love for you to join my YouTube family and hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks y'all, and I'll see you next time. Bye. You know the saying goes, you had me at hello. You had me at pumpkin spice. <laughs> I'm about as smooth as they come, really. I mean, people wish they were as smooth as me.